So we convened a session today on lifestyles and cancer prevention and we know that there's been a lot of focus on smoking in the past and that's an extremely important area but what we wanted to do was to draw the spotlight a little bit more on diet, nutrition and alcohol consumption because we know that they are causes of cancer and there's a lot of evidence now to show how they are related to the development of cancer but also how you can make changes in lifestyle to reduce your risk of cancer or to improve your life quality if you've had cancer and you are somebody who is um, surviving from treatment. The speakers were focusing on uh, diet and nutrition. We had um, Professor Paolo Buffetta from the United States and Professor Martin Wiseman from uh, the UK and they were essentially top experts on uh, nutrition and physical activity and it's linked to obesity, the amount of fat that we're carrying around in our bodies and how that can um, essentially be linked to the development of cancer and what we need to do. I think the important thing is what can we do to help people be aware of the risk between their lifestyle choices, their behaviour and cancer and then also how they can actually take some steps in their lives to reduce their risk um, of developing cancer in the future. There aren't recently any specific individual trials that we were talking about. What we were talking about is an accumulated evidence base that's been building now over decades that show comprehensively that there are aspects of our lifestyles that can lead us to develop cancer but also changes in behaviour that we can engage in that can then um, help us to reduce that risk or even to uh, improve our survival and life quality if we have been diagnosed with cancer. Well, we talked quite a lot about interventions. These are things that we can do to help to change behaviour, to help to change people's understanding of the link between their behaviour and cancer, and to improve people's um, health and well-being. Uh, practitioners have got an important role in terms of helping to communicate the risk to patients from their behaviour and the development of cancers, and they can provide advice and brief lifestyle counselling that can actually help achieve some small changes in behaviour that can lead to better health outcomes. But I think we also quite strongly said that the role of practitioners is important and it needs to be reinforced by actions that could be taken at a policy level to try to change the environment in which people live their lives and make those choices in terms of what they eat, um, how active they are and what they drink. Um, and they've got an even more powerful role to play so that the practitioner's work is reinforcing and adding to that um, altered environment. We're all surrounded by the internet and lots of social media and there's very ri little regulation of the information that people can access on the internet and through social media. I think the best thing to think about is that practitioners um, are usually grounded in common sense but they've also got a medical training behind them and they are able to simplify and to communicate to patients what it is that they can do to achieve best health really. So I would say that most people who had a diagnosis of cancer will be familiar with their general practitioner and the primary care nurses in their practice and they're a reliable and useful source of information about lifestyle changes that can be made to reduce reduce cancer risk. I think the first best step is to try to help prevent people from getting cancer in the first place and a lot of what we were talking about were public health interventions to change behaviour to try to reduce the incidence of cancer, those new cases of cancer that um, are presenting each year. But we also heard that where people um, have had a diagnosis of cancer, if they um, are able to make uh, changes in their behaviour, in their lifestyles, that can improve your prognosis after you've had a diagnosis of cancer. So I think the, there's um, some positive messages there, both in terms of people who've not yet had cancer and also for people who've had that diagnosis, but now who often increasingly have many years of life ahead of them. And what we want to do is to optimise their health in those um, years and also their, their perceived quality of life during those years.